So hi everybody, welcome to another uh, Learn English with Football live show, which I broadcast here on YouTube. And uh, I've got a guest today. His name is Nrup. Hi, Nrup. Yo, Zaniak. Hi. Hello, everyone. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm all right. Uh, a bit tired. I had a long day. So I'm just... It's almost eight o'clock, so I think I, I might sleep in a couple of hours. Okay, well, let's hope this uh, live show doesn't make you sleepy anymore. Let's hope, no, let's hope uh, so. you're at your full strength here today. As, as always, we're going to talk about football and the premiership. The, and we've got some people watching us. We're going to talk about match week 19. Yeah, so which was obviously very eventful. Three matches were postponed. Uh, but those matches that were played were a lot of fun, obviously. Uh, a lot of goals were scored as well. So I think there, there's, there's some stuff to talk about. And there's also one more match going on tonight, I believe, in about one hour. I think, Manchester United, I think Manche Manchester United are playing Newcastle, as, as far as uh, I know. Yeah, that's right. Um, this match is played in in Newcastle. So yeah, okay. So Manchester are, play are playing. Yeah, I can see. It. Manchester United are playing away from home. Yeah. So as always, when I do this show, oh, by the way, let me put, let me change the camera angle here a little bit. Whenever I do this show, I try to explain some vocabulary. Um as I go along, as, as I discuss football with my guests, like Nrup. So, if you play away from home, that means, that means uh, you're not playing at your own stadium. So Manchester United are playing away from home. This means that this match is going on or is happening in Newcastle. All right? So as always, it's fantastic to have some people watching us live. That's how this show is done. It's very interactive. So hi, hi, teacher Rod. Hi, Martin. Hi, Helen. It's good to have you here. Nrup, tell us again where you're from and what team you support. So I'm from India, Mumbai, and uh, I support Arsenal, Arsenal Football FC, uh, Arsenal, Arsenal FC. Yeah. Okay. And my name is Denek. I'm from the Czech Republic and I support Arsenal slash West Ham. Some of you might be thinking, what's that? How is that even possible? How can you support two teams? That doesn't make any sense. I know it's weird, but it's just like sometimes people love two people at the same time. This is what's happening to me, guys. I am torn. I'm torn between two clubs. Okay, so if you're torn, if you're torn, it means that it's difficult for you to decide who you love more or who you support more. You are torn. Have you ever been torn, Nrup? Yes, I, I, I have been once when uh, uh, when I was following Arsen, Arsen Wenger's Arsenal and uh, Pep Guardiola's Barcelona. I was really torn. Like those two teams were my ultimate favorite teams, and I just couldn't follow them often. And I was always in a dilemma because I remember once they faced each other, and I just never knew who to support. It was in the Champions League quarterfinal. Yeah, no, I, I know exactly how you feel. To be honest, uh, nice word, dilemma. Uh, it's like when you have two choices situations and it's a difficult it's really difficult to decide which one you go for yeah Dil a dilemma so i have i have exactly this problem and this sunday on the boxing day on the boxing day in the uk um both these teams that i like were playing at the same time Rub. so west ham united were playing yeah, did. against southampton a home match against Southampton, whereas Arsenal were playing away from home uh, at Norwich, yeah, Norwich City, who are at the bottom of the league currently. And um, I, 
went for West Ham. I just went for West Ham. It was um, it was a decision that I made. I'm not saying I regret it, although it didn't really it re didn't really pan out in my favor. <laughs> I have to say. So Nrup, uh, the first thing we, I'm going to ask you is what football matches did you see this match week? I can see you are a little bit frozen right now, but hopefully you are coming back. I actually knew Nup was, Nup was frozen for a long time. That's why I was trying to stretch out my answer, hoping that um, he would come back at some point. But right now, I think he's trying to come back. Hey, here, here he is. Yeah. Your internet, Sorry. your internet is playing up today. Your internet is playing up. What's what's going on? So, I I think it's the Wi-Fi. Can you hear me well? I can. Yeah, I can. So if if your in, if you say your internet is playing up, it means play up is a phrase of verb, which means it's not working the way it's supposed to. Yeah which is a nice little phrase of verb you can use to, to speak about technology. Yeah. So I was just saying, Rup, that I went for the West Ham game over the Arsenal game on Hampton. Sunday. Yeah. yeah. I also kind of knew that I would be doing this show with you and I knew you would, you would watch the Arsenal game, of course, so you would have insight about this game, whereas me, I was like, okay, then, then let, let me watch the West Ham game instead. So... So is that the yeah. only match you saw, Nrup? Is that the only match you yeah, saw, the, or were there more matches? Yeah, that was the only game that I saw. But yeah, I was following City versus Leicester side by side, along with Arsenal versus um, yeah, you know, alongside the Arsenal game, I was watching the City versus versus Leicester. Great entertainment, lots of goals, proper Boxing Day. Okay, nice one. And then I've got a new section of this Learn English with Football uh, show. And um, it's called, Who is your hero? And I'm going to play it. Okay, so I would like to know who your hero of this match week is, if you've got one, obviously. Oof. I mean, for me, since I was only watching Arsenal's game, I would go for Saka. He was the hero, the star Why? boy. Although he wasn't the man of the match, um, the way he performed, he scored two fantastic goals, just pinch perfect. And I was really impressed considering goals coming from someone who's under 21. And he has the most goals in Premier League, who is uh, from his age group. More goals and most assists. How old is he? 21, I think. Under 21. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well, he is, he is a up-and-coming talent, isn't he? He's, he's brilliant. He's been brilliant. Uh, he is, so you said, you said he scored two fantastic goals, inch perfect. Yeah. So we're looking at the phrase inch perfect, which means... Um, we, we use this to describe usually the way a, a football player finishes his, his his shot. Let's say, yeah. So if it's an inch perfect shot, basically it 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 ends up in the back of the net, maybe right behind the post or in the top corner. It's inch perfect. The shot is inch perfect. And I have to say, I obviously I saw the highlights, and yeah, the, these both the go both goals that Saka scored. I would say where I came up with this expression, Salah-esque. <laughs> Salah -esque. Yeah, I agree, I agree. They were <laughs> yeah. Salah-esque. Yeah, for Premier League standards, yes, Salah-esque, I would say. I agree with you. This, uh, by the way, he's 20 years old and wow, he's just he's so good. Mm -hmm. His career has just old. started. Yeah. And also, I was quite impressed with uh, Odegaard, who was actually who was unseen during the game because... I think he was the one who was controlling our attack. He created so many opportunities. And he has two assists in the game, which just shows how good he is as a as our creator. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we are filling the gap that Ozil left. 
That's right. Odegar, obviously the Nor Norwegian captain. Yeah. Uh, he has been brilliant ever since he signed for us. I mean, last last year he was playing at Arsenal on loan, I believe. Right. Uh, but now. Now he is the, now he is obviously the number ten, right? He's our number ten. Yeah, is that right? No, he's not a number ten. He's our number eleven. Number eight. Yeah, but uh, don't you don't you call a playmaker a number ten? A playmaker. Ah, like okay, yeah. yeah. I yeah. thought you meant yeah, like yeah. the number, like just no, 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 yeah, no. He's our so, number ten. So if if you if you say a player is number ten, that means he is playmaker. Yeah. I, I by the way, I always maker. say I'm sorry guys, I always say he. Obviously, it could be she as well, right? I don't want to be sexist here on this show. Obviously, it could be it could be a woman, right? Because a woman's football is is obviously very very important as well. Yeah, so he uh, he is a number 10. Or he is the number 10 rather. Okay? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's very young as well. He's about 20 something, 22. Yeah, 23, 23, 22. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. But he is definitely up there. Oh, there God. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's 23. Yeah. 23 years old. Quite good. Wow, wow. That's that's amazing. Yeah. So, uh, anyone else impressed you in the Arsenal team? Well, I, I mean, impressed you. I mean, I think I would say Partey because considering how his form was, he played quite decent football. Uh, it was a bit impressive because I, I can't even mention Emil Smithrow, but I think his have just gone so high that I'm not even impressed. For me, it's like, okay, so, uh, Emil Smithrow just comes off the bench, scores, assists. For me, it's like a normal day. But Partey playing a good game, I think it was impressive. Yeah, yeah Partey is so showing signs. Of improvement, more confidence. Mm. He definitely saved us a couple of times from possible goals. Yeah, he was good. I agree. I agree. Like considering that he has been one of the underperforming players yeah. in the Arsenal squad, his performance was quite impressive. He impressed us, which is a nice expression. To impress, if you impress someone, it means you you do a good job, and then and then um, basically, how do we explain this word? You you do a good job, and you 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 make you make someone respect you. Basically, you you. I'm not explaining this very well. You cause someone feel admiration or respect. Yeah, it's it's the definition. All right, uh, and we've got okay. another. Guess here. Hi, Marvin. How's it going, brothers? <laughs> Hello, Marvin. Hello, welcome, Mar well, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, very Marvin, much. obviously a Chelsea fan, right? Let's do this. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna talk about Chelsea here as well today. Just to quickly do what I always have to do. This is Marvin's YouTube channel. Okay, everyone. So you can subscribe to Marvin's YouTube channel. He's an English teacher like myself. And this is Nrup's Instagram profile. Nrup is not an English teacher. However, he is a future doctor. Yeah, yeah. and doc yeah. doctors are always needed. So you help never know. My headaches. Like... I need some help for my headaches, <laughs> Nrup. Come on, brother. Oh, <laughs> yeah, because you support Chelsea. That's why. Yeah, it's yeah. a constant headache. <laughs> oh, like the times have changed. <laughs> yeah, okay. things have changed. Let's use Great. this view. Shall we use this view? Which which view do you guys like the most? This one? That one? That one? Second one. Second one. The second yeah. one. Okay. I can see okay, you guys. Go, yeah. let's, let's go for this one then. Okay, let me just change the position of the camera. So we are talking about the Arsenal match. Did you, did you happen to see the highlights, Marvin? Yes. Yes. So yeah, were, you impre were you impressed by the Arsenal performance? Absolutely, yes. I think that... Uh, you guys have gotten better and better each each week, I think. And so to my surprise, because I said no more than eighth uh, for your season. And uh, I'm really impressed. The way of play is good. Uh, you've been scoring some great goals. Uh, your young players have 
exciting. <clears throat> Lukonga, uh, Saka have been really good. Uh, Smith Rowe, who I rate really highly, I think he's, he's actually a very good player. No, in general, I, I've got nothing against. I think you've been playing well and been deserving to win. So you can't really argue with that, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know what's funny? I remember when we talked with you about two months ago here on this show. And yep. you told us that the only world-class player in the Arsenal squad was Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. And what yeah. happened to him? What, what do you think of this, of this whole development well, of, of his career at Arsenal? A good question, because I still believe that's true. Um, I still believe you've got a young team, a hungry team, and they're definitely doing better than I expected. But that's me as a football fan. I will always be willing to come to the table if I got something wrong. I mean, I'm very impressed with the way you guys have been playing. And I think the problem with Alabama, he's just a bit older. He might be lacking a bit on the discipline side. I still think you put him in a world-class team, he's going to bang goals. Um, I think, without offence to you guys, I think he made the wrong choice going to Arsenal. And not just Arsenal, I think he made the wrong choice staying so long at Dortmund. Same kind of team, in my opinion. I think he's he's lost out on a lot of what he could have had, because I wanted him at Chelsea. I wanted him before Morata. I didn't want Morata so much. Um, I thought that Alabama, because he's fast, he's good at sitting on the shoulder, he's good at getting in behind. He does miss quite a lot of chances, but I think you're a better team with him in it, for sure. Okay, Nero, how do you feel about this? Obviously, he was kicked out of the team. I don't know if you know the story, Marvin, but a little Arteta, bit. Arteta kicked him out of the team because he he breached uh, some kind of disciplinary uh, rule Fair or enough. something. Yeah, and uh, it's now he's not even training with the with the team, mm. as far as I know. So, Nero, uh, what do you think about what Marvin said there? Are you surprised? Uh, I uh, no, I'm not actually because I, I agree. He is definitely our captain. He was, he has been arguably our best player for past three seasons. The ace, uh, giving us lots of points. But with the current squad we have, I don't think we need him. We need, we need, we are in need of a big striker, a one who can, the one who is a poacher, the one who can take in those crosses given by Tierney and Saka. The one, the one who's always there, in the penalty box, ready for those tap ins and headers. And we, we are in need for that. And yeah, in my opinion, I, w I would love a I would love a I would love for I would love a quick free free swap between uh, Lukaku for Aubameyang. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure Marvin would take it as, I'm as we know he he doesn't rate yeah. <laughs> Lukaku he doesn't rate Lukaku very highly as we know. So a poacher is a type of striker that basically scores goals from almost any position and just keeps scoring goals. I think you could con you can consider someone like Harry Kane a poacher. And uh, yeah. So... Um, fox in the box. There's the idiom for that too, isn't it? A fox, fox, in fox, the box. fox in the box, yeah. Fox in the box. It doesn't necessarily refer to a Leicester City player though, does it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, I probably would do that deal because I think Alabama suits the Chelsea way I play a little more, but... A lot of people really like Lukaku. Uh, he did win our game almost single-handedly uh, yesterday. So, you know, hopefully that's what he was bought to do. But uh, not aside from Chelsea. No, I think Arsenal have been playing really well. And I think the only thing you can really say is that you haven't beaten any top teams. And that is what I think will actually cost you uh, getting close to top four in the long run. Uh, I don't want to say it, but I think Tottenham will pass you. Um, because I think they, because of the manager X factor that they now the, Con have. the Conte factor, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't be surprised. However, now we are on a high, yeah. Sorry. We are on a high, which is another good phrase. Basically, we're playing very well right now. Everything is going our way, and yeah, we are in a good form. Do you think, do you think Tottenham will surpass us? Nope. Uh, I think not because uh, Tottenham haven't played their three away games, Wait. and uh, I mean in two weeks, we, you know, in three weeks they'll be facing us uh, okay. at their home. So we'll see because we'll be facing Wolves and City, and let's say I'd be pretty sure City will beat us. So we'll be hungry. We'll be in the mood for revenge. Win. We'll be in, we'll be hungry. We'll be really dangerous towards Tottenham and considering Tottenham they'll be facing Southampton and uh, one more uh, one more team I think yeah Burnley or something 
and uh, yeah, they'll be in good mood, you know, scoring points probably ahead of us, and that's when we have to pinch them. Yeah, I know it's the Conte factor and stuff, but I think uh, they're just going ahead because uh, they got more time than us because of Corona. Uh, when you think of it, at the beginning of the season, when we lost three games in a row, we never got any time given by the Premier League, and we lost. We had around eight players. And among them, there were five. Five of them were were our first team players. You're talking Corona. to me about that. You're talking to me about that. We had seven out, and they still made us play the game. Uh, they allowed Brentford to have this with four out. They allowed Man United with three, and we had seven, and they still made us play, and we didn't win. So we we threw the Wolves game as a result of this. So I think the Premier League's bias is 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 astounding, and it's disgusting, and I think it needs looking at. Okay, so what would be the solution, Marvin? Because obviously, well, I, I heard I heard some people discussing this. Yeah, so yeah. there are two things to look at. Yeah, so on the one hand, like you could you could come up with some kind of a rule that it will be the same for everyone. Yeah, so if you let's say if you have three players that have COVID, three or more, then you can't play. Yeah, yep. but I think what they were trying to do was look at the whole squad at the at how rich the club is, what resources the club has at disposal. And they were trying to sort of balance it out a little bit. So that's that, why it's it, it probably that's probably what they went for. I don't know. How do you feel about this? It, it doesn't work because exactly what happens will be that one team will try to say, you know, they'll try to not have all the players arrive for the win week and then they can prepare for the next game. And that's exactly what happened with Brentford. They tried to cheat the system so that they could have an easier ride against us in the Carabao Cup. And they still lost. So, you know, screw mm. them. But in general, it, it has to be the same rules for every single team. Like, mm. for, for Man United had three players out and they were able to reschedule the game. We had seven and they made us play and we draw. Yeah. So now you we say that, Marvin. I understand. You say that. But this can never ball. be the same. But it can never be the same for every single team because... Some teams are richer than others. Some teams, some, some teams have more resources. That's that's the whole problem, yeah. So well, it's, it's like same, if, surely if you, it's the if same you, kind of situation. If Brentford has three players out and Chelsea has three players out, they're both significantly weakened because it's not their first eleven. Either okay, way, but, if, if those players are not out, you still got a team that's better than the other team. But it should never be that one of the better teams is allowed to have seven out, whilst the lesser team is allowed to have two. It's still not. It's not fair. It doesn't. It doesn't seem fair. What I'm saying is, like, for example, if if Man City have three players out, if you, even if these are their best three players, they still have a better squad than anyone else. You see, so that that's my problem with it. Because if if you set this rule that it's the same for everyone, I think it's it's going to widen the gap between the poor and the rich club. That is my opinion. But I I agree that it's it's complicated because. There's the other angle as well. So I get it. Well, my opinion is that's not fair business practice because Man City is a much better club than Brentford. So are we de deliberately weakening the better teams just so that everyone can play? It does, it's, it's not correct. It's not correct. And uh, what they should have done, in my opinion, is played every game because players would be out regardless. They should have just played every game. But instead, they, they set this unfair precedent where some teams could have their games cancelled yeah. and their less favourite teams would have to play them. And I think it's, it's ridiculous. It's actually cost us points, which could actually cost us the league title. And we should be cost the league title by playing badly, not by the Premier League's favourite teams being in first and second as every single year. It's, it's ridiculous to me. Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you agree in the group that, um, that uh, the Premier League have made a hash of it? Make a hatch or something. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, they have the prem this time. It's the league to be blamed because they should have actually played the game indoors or just yeah. gave a big break because yeah. December month itself was so intense. There were like games every second day, every third day, and uh, plus we had the winter season coming, so the corona cases were raising, and you know it was a festive mood. So I think. The Premier League just should have been uh, off for one month and then in January or something they could have started again. Yeah. It's just bad management, no. terrible. No, I agree, I agree. And the phrase to make a hash of something means they ruined it. They kind of ruined the they distorted yeah. the league. I agree with Marvin there. Either they should have let 
uh, I sh either they should have told everyone to play, even if they played with their youngsters. Come on, they yeah. would quarantine. They would, the players would quarantine, and after 14 days they would be fine. And the it's whole point each of sport. It's why and we have either they are vac either they are vaccinated or not. Each team would have to go through it in in one form and or another. So yeah. you know, we got squads, uh, right? It's a squad game. Yeah. But, but they set a precedent, right? Precedent. It's it's um. It's a good phrase. They set a precedent eh? with the, the with the first decision. It set a precedent, right? Which means now because of that, like this has never be happened before. But because of that, this is how law in the UK works, as far as I know. You're always looking at the previous cases, right? Whatever yeah. happened before, and you are comparing it to that. And so they made one decision. And as a result of that, then they had to start comparing the decision to any future decision. But it's it's difficult to make those decisions, and they may they may have um, they may have been uh, a bit harsh on Chelsea. There, I agree. Not just Chelsea. I think they, there were some other teams that had a lot of players out. I mean, we were one of the harshest dealt with because we had seven in the one game in the game that we played against Wolves. We had no strikers. Havertz, no Werner, no Lukaku, none. And we created almost no chances. So hang on, it, hang, hang on, Marvin. But Man City have no strikers and they win 6-3, 7-0. Seven, seven <laughs> but they've got players that can score. So their wingers, inverted players, can all score goals. Ours cannot. So the, the difference is, is that when you don't give us any of our three strikers, there, there is only one outcome. It's a loss or it's a draw. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly what happened. I I think we've been playing pretty terribly over the last weeks, but that particular Wolves game was was a steal, in my opinion, thanks to the Premier League. Fair enough. Okay, so we have got this section here, uh, this section called Hero of the Match Week. So I already <laughs> asked Nrup, he said it was Saka. Let me, uh, for me, who is the hero? Yeah, I was going to say Saka or Arteta. For me, Arteta. I'll say Arteta because... The way he managed to turn it round, nobody, no, not maybe Nrup was the only one who believed in him after the first two matches of the season. And then we played against Norwich, the third match. We managed to scrape a win, 1 0 win. And everybody wanted Art, still Arteta out. And now look, look what's happening half a year later. Uh, we, we absolutely hammered, we, we absolutely hammered Norwich. We won 5 0 away from home. So okay. for me, for me, the hero is Arteta. Who will it be for you, Marvin? Well, it's definitely as much as as well as Arsenal played. You're playing against in a game where you cannot lose. So I'm not going to go from the Arsenal teams. Can't go from the Tottenham because they had a red card early on, handicap game. I won't give it to even. I think Lukaku for us would have been the one that won the game, but also not him. I, I'm actually going with Leandro Trossard from Bright uh, from Brighton. I think he had an absolutely amazing game yesterday and it's those little bits of quality that make the smaller teams do better uh, and I think that he's been he's gone under the radar for the last two seasons he's good at isolating his man he's good at creating chances he can score a couple and I don't think there's ever anything mentioned about this player so I'm going with Leandro Trossard I think he was absolutely amazing if you saw the the Brighton Brentford game the other day I did I did not but I, I agree he's an excellent player. He was in my starting eleven at the beginning of this season in the Fantasy League. Oh. But then I think he wasn't... He, Good player. He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't bringing me any points, so I, I transferred him out. Uh, okay, let's, let's do this section now. Match week will villain. So, Nrup, who do you have as match week villain? It's villain. I mean, I wish I could see the Premier League, but okay. <laughs> I would go for Zaha. Come on. Wilfried Zaha, why? Uh, because <laughs> of the way he played. I mean, he's the most crucial player of Crystal Palace, of Premier League in general as well. Uh, he can make quite an impact, and he did in a negative way by getting the red card. It was very bad. I think he punched the player. Yeah. Something like that. Mm. Was bad. I don't think it was a punch, but it was like it was so silly, definitely. Yeah, uh, he is my villain of the week as well. It I don't know who else. I, 
it, that's who I was going to go for as well, but I'm going to change it because I think it's an obvious choice that it was Zaha. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he cost the team the game. Uh, yeah. I'm going with an outsider here. I'm going with Tyrone Mings. I think is uh, rash, dirty, incredibly overrated, spends half the time kicking the opposition, and this time was just embarrassed by losing this man. Every, I mean, Chelsea's goals that, that I mean, we scored, I mean, great movement, but the defending was just atrocious. So I'm going with, I'm going with Tyro Mings uh, for the villain of the week. Right, so Tyro Mings was embarrassed by, are you saying he was embarrassed by the Chelsea players, yeah? It, well, he embarrassed himself. I think more than anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> right. And for me, okay, I have to change it as well. So I'm going to go because I went for the hero. I went for Arteta as the hero. So I'm going to choose David Moyes as the oh. villain. Because I, you know, I, I, have been so, I have been so impressed by West Ham for the past few months. And last year as well, last season. That's why I even started supporting them. But uh, these days, did, did you know that West Ham have won only one of their last seven matches? They are in a terrible, terrible form. They, they lack confidence. It's their, their gameplay is uninspiring. David Moyes, he seems to be too conservative. Uh, which could be a good thing because he trusts his players. But when it's not working, you just have to change something. And I I feel like David Moyes is not doing enough of that. So in my humble opinion, David Moyes needs to change his ways a little bit. Okay. So let's let's go. Yeah, Marvin. Go ahead. I'll come in after well, you, if you want to say something about David Moyes, go ahead. I think maybe that they were performing a little bit over their level. So I'm not sure. I think this was always going to come. I, I don't think fourth was ever going to be where they will finish. I, I think they've done way better than they should have. So I'm not sure. I mean, I think he'll turn it round. I think they've just been unlucky. I mean, they lost some close games, haven't they? I don't think they've been really battered in any games. Yeah, but, but it's also about the, the level of performance. It's just... One thing is to lose one by one by one goal. I agree, but another thing is just the way that the, the, the way they are playing right now is just so lackluster. And you said that they were they have been performing above their level. There's a, a good expression to punch above y- your weight. Yeah, so they have been punching above their weight, West Ham. Do, do, would you agree with this, uh, Nrup? Uh, definitely, I would agree and. I think I'm not surprised by the way West Ham are performing right now because they cannot sustain with the squad for this long, considering how the Premier League is. And I suggest the West Ham sh- they should go all out during the winter transfer window, otherwise yeah. they lose the top four spot for sure. There are only two players who are playing really well right now: Declan Rice. You cannot say anything bad about this lad. He's so he has been so good, so good. Yeah. Doesn't he? Doesn't put a foot wrong. That's another good expression. He doesn't put a foot wrong. So everything he does is great. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and then David, uh, um, they, I wanted to say David Bowie. What's his name? <laughs> Bowen. Bowen. Bowen, it's right? Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen. Jared. Jared, I was like David Bowie. <laughs> Jared Bowen, of course. Well, he is a star man. <laughs> yeah. These two guys have been brilliant, but the rest of the team, out of form. Antonio, how good this guy has been for the past few months, but not, not these weeks, not at all. He did score one goal, however, finally. But uh, apart from that... Nothing special from him, right? Like the rest of the team, especially the offensive players were really uninspiring. Yeah, I was I was quite disappointed. Like it was a good game in terms of the uh, score line because it was three two. So all, I think that was that was a common theme for the whole match week. A lot of goals were scored. A lot. 
Uh, we haven't even started talking about the city games, so let's let's talk about that. So Nrup, you saw you said you you saw the highlight here yeah, of the city game, Manchester yeah, yeah. City Leicester game. What was the final score line? Six three. What? I mean, it was close. Are, you really are we talking about football or is that ice hockey or something? I think it's basketball, but yeah, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, uh, unbelievable. Uh, good, good fight back from Leicester actually, because I remember uh, there was a similar game, Leicester versus City as well, a few years ago, and I think City had bottled the game, or it was a draw. I think it was a four-four draw, and I was really expecting something similar to happen. But yeah, from from four-zero to four-three, and then six-three, it was quite a roller coaster for me to watch the game alongside with Arsenal versus Norwich. Yeah, did you say you thought City had City had bottled the game? Is that what you said? Yeah, I really thought. At the moment I saw four three, I'm like, no way, this is mm -hmm. it. I guess City will lose points. Yeah. So you thought City had bottled the game? To bottle the game or to bottle it? It's a very nice slang expression, which means to to sort of mess it up or fuck it up. If you use a, <laughs> a more more vulgar term, obviously, which is okay in football as long as you don't insult someone with it, I think you can say it like that. Yeah, and it's part of the banter. Sometimes you you do use these words, so why not? You bottle it. If you bottle it, you mess it up. You you muck it. You muck it up. But they managed to win six three. A lot of goals. A lot of fantastic goals. Marvin. What do you think? Where do you stand on yeah, City? I think they've won the league already, to be honest. And uh, yep. I'm not really, I'm not really enjoying because every year the same team just win and win and win and win. I think it's really been detrimental to the league. But they are a very good team, and I think they've got a little more than Liverpool. Um, yep. They've got the system is a, they always win with a system. I mean, maybe they can't go all the way in the cup competitions, but I think they're a shoe in for the league now. I mean, what? How they're six six points ahead now, they're six. Yeah, yeah, six points. It's, it's for gonna... me, it's not just for me. It's not just the points. It's just the manner of their their victories. It's just like yeah, you don't. They beat good like, teams. Like point, pointless to watch. It's so. Yeah, I mean, you, I, you I know, it already on. decided. The games are already decided when they when they yeah. score their first goal. You know, it was four nil in 20, uh, 25 minutes. That's when I turn I turned the game off at one nil. I'll be honest. Um, I saw the goals yeah. at over. And, and even though they did come back, I was never, I did see that they'd scored. I was like, they won't get it back. And they didn't. And it's just, it's a very good team. And unfortunately, if they do end up getting a striker, someone like Haaland, then they are never going to lose again. Mm. Um, so we <laughs> cannot let this happen. I can't even think of where they will drop these points. I mean, maybe they'll get a couple of draws, but at the same time, Liverpool and Chelsea and Arsenal, they've all got to yeah. play against the other big teams. I included Arsenal because you're four. Um, and, and all those teams, you, we still got to play. So for for that to turn around, one of those teams needs to win more than one big game. Now they need to win two. And winning against City and Liverpool and Chelsea and, and all of the good teams, it's not easy to do. You might get one, you might draw one, but then you're relying on City to draw a lot of games or lose two games. I, I would be surprised if they lost more than three for the rest of the season, to be honest. Yeah. What's your take on Manchester City in group? Uh, well, uh, honestly, I'm actually much more impressed because I, at the beginning, I really thought Pep was experimenting with the system because he had Gabriel Jesus and Aguero in the bench, and yet he would start the game without a striker. And then now when I look at it, they lost even Ferran Torres, Aguero, Jesus is barely playing. And uh, right now, when I look at the team, considering how they had issues with Bernardo Silva at the beginning of the season, they also had issues with Sterling. They both had links with Barcelona and other teams because they were not uh, happy with the with their with their opportunities that that they were getting. And now, when you look at it, they both are the stars of the game. And uh, it's just that no no player is actually underperforming under Pep Guardiola. Everyone is scoring. It's such a team game. It's very wholesome. Good for them, actually. I think they are, they have just set a big standard. You know, they want to win the Premier yeah. League at the same time win the Champions League as well. Good for them. Really impressed. Yeah, and you as a former former Barcelona fan, yeah, you said you supported Barcelona when Pep was 
that was there. So what, how does that make you feel? Like, don't you don't you secretly support City as well because of him? No, I don't support City. No, I know I, I don't really support City. I, I I like to follow what Pep Guardiola uh, is doing uh, with football because I used to follow him under Bayern Munich as well, and he, he's he's just a fantastic manager to look at. I, I like his philosophy. I like what he brings to the teams. He's really good. He's quite good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you said no player is underperforming Guardiola. So that's a good that's a good sentence. So to underperform means to play below your level. Yeah. To underperform, <clears throat> you can overperform, which means you play better than expected, and you can underperform. Now this is an interesting verb. And I believe the stress underperform is on form, right? Underperform. Yeah, the first, the, the, there are a lot of syllables in this word, but the stressed one is, on, is the four syllable, underperform, because perform, obviously, yeah, the, the, the second syllable in perform is stressed. So then we have under, underperform. Yeah, that's it. Right. Which player is underperforming at uh, Chelsea? So is it still Ooh, Lukaku, go. or is it is it is it is it is it not Lukaku anymore after scoring well, and playing so well against uh, who was it? Who did we beat? We beat Aston Villa. Uh, Lukaku, Three one. Yeah. Lukaku's not really been playing. He's only been getting little bits in the second half to get his fitness back up before. So I couldn't really say him uh, underperforming. Definitely Mason Mount. I think a lot of people think he's Jesus Christ on football Twitter. Um, he's a good player, but he's not been playing well, in my opinion. Um, all the midfield, fantastic. I'd say, who else would be? Uh, Reese James, last couple of games, not been so good. Uh, I do rate the player a lot. Um, the goalkeeper, we've let in some really silly goals. And, and Mendy, I thought before, I think last time I was on here, was saying he was the best keeper in the world. So there is some underperformance in our team. Um, if I'm looking at the bench right now that's playing well you expect Barkley and to not play well as Pili Cueto when he's had his chances he's just been kicking the ball in the air and hoping for the best um so I'd say those are probably the main underperformers I would say um uh, the main team but I, I hope that they'll get better and we'll, we'll turn it around soon yeah but finally finally you, you managed to to win because obviously you had you, you've had a really poor run so, with a lot of draws and it looked like you were sort of you know written, kind of being written off a little bit as the well last game for, for the title challenge right yeah so, i think that's fair i think i think we're out i don't think we're, i'm not we're sure good. i i don't think so i mean you just you just need to get a few wins and you will you will still be in the mix you are still chelsea you know, we, need so city. We, we need we need city to lose too much i just can't see it happening to be honest you go six behind it's a lot for a team that's never lose yeah. a game it's city. It's about city, isn't it? Because yeah. something can happen to Liverpool, right? They, yeah. they, they are an amazing team, but they have Afcon now coming up. So obviously, yeah. Salah, yeah. Salah, Mane will be out. That's one thing. Uh, and another thing is the the squad depth. Like they don't have so much squad depth. No. So if a few good players get injured, they're in trouble. Whereas City, it's it's another it's another story. Yeah, yeah I believe so Liverpool. You, cool. Yeah. Marvin, so you you won three one and. Am I right in saying that Jorginho scored two penalties again? Yeah. <laughs> again? It happened Every like 14 days ago or something, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you look, I mean, it's quite a surprise to see Chelsea get so many penalties because normally we, we don't get, you'd have to snap the legs off before they give um, give us anything. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been interesting because, I mean, the foul on Lukaku is ridiculous and they just keep making silly fouls. I mean, it was Matty Cash that made the one on a door. He didn't need to do anything. He probably would have just lost the ball. It was running in behind him. And we've been very fortunate with that. I think it was a last minute goal. We scored against Leeds for the same thing. I think Rudiger got kicked in the back leg. They didn't need to do that either. He had his back to goal. He could have just let him turn and kick the ball over. I, we've, we've had some luck with some very bad defending, actually. Yeah, very, very fortunate. Mm-hmm. Let's take a look at this quickly. So you are, you're speaking. Who was the player that fouled Lukaku again? Um, I'm actually a uh, Consa. I think Jeffrey Consa. Hang on. Who were you referring to when you said he didn't need to do anything? He probably no. would have. 
that was Matty Cash on the foul on Hudson Odoi in the first half. Right, right. So he didn't need to do anything. That means he no. didn't have to touch no. the player, right? It would be better just to leave it. And I think he would have been okay. because because the player that had the ball would have probably lost the ball, right? So yeah, if you if you yeah. mm -hmm. coming in there is right at the end, so all he could have done was try and fire that back across goal. He would have been better off yeah. just letting him run. Right. So we are looking at this. So we're talking. This is this is quite uh, tricky to explain as an English teacher. So we are looking at the past here, and we have the modal verb would plus have plus past participle. So we are talking about what could have happened. We are talking about a possibility in the past, yeah? And this is, if you think something was a possibility, you can use would. He would have lost the ball. And because you, you want to make it weaker, you also use the word probably. So he would have probably, or he probably would have lost the ball. So very nice uh, modal verb used to talk about possibility, probability. Okay? So... What else is there to talk about? Let me just quickly go through. I want to keep these shows a little bit shorter than in the past. This is one one of my New Year's resolutions. <laughs> even though even though the new New Year hasn't started yet, I have already started implementing it, guys, because I feel like sometimes I was not disciplined enough with all my shows and podcasts and I'm because I always enjoy myself so much. I enjoy talking to you about football. Who doesn't love talking about football, right? Yeah. But that means sometimes I stretch it too long. That's 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 the problem. So um, I guess I guess I I guess we can leave it here. Uh, I will ask you one last question though. So what is your prediction? I, I want <laughs> I wanted to ask Nrup, but currently Nrup is frozen. So I'm no. going to start with you. I'm going to start. I'm going to. He is frozen in a nice little cell, though. That's that's a positive. <laughs> <So. laughs> He's not frowning, at least. So, well, Marvin, what's your, what's your prediction for tonight's game? Tonight's Manchester United Newcastle game, which starts in about 10 minutes. I'm going. If you're watching this live, obviously. I will actually. It's a two-nil to Man United. I think I, Newcastle are down because they've signed a hipster manager that's not that good, and I don't think it's going to do anything unless they bring players in in January. <clears throat> they should have kept Steve Bruce. I mean, he's not a glamorous coach, but he'll be good enough to keep them up, I think. Um, so yeah, I'll easy Man United win here. They've been very fortunate to avoid playing their fixtures and be where they are now. Yeah, that, that's 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 right. I've got uh, Cristiano Ronaldo in my starting eleven, and I've had quite a good week this uh, this this uh, this week in fantasy. And I still have Ronaldo and Dalot, so let's see if they can manage uh, they can manage to get me some points. Uh, I like this expression that you used. They signed. Oh, here here comes the group. Melt it <laughs> back. So. Um, you said that Newcastle signed a hipster manager. Uh, so um, if you say hipster, if you're looking at the, the meaning, uh, it means that someone who follows the latest trends and ideas, I think it's often used in a, in a negative sense. And that's, yeah. that's, how you, that's how you probably meant it, yeah? <laughs> why, did you, why did you say hipster manager? What was your thinking behind it? <clears throat> because it's like a, a perceived way of playing, a perceived greatness that the coach has that he actually doesn't. I've been live Chelsea versus Bournemouth twice. Uh, and the football played by Bournemouth was horrendous. Time wasting, laying on the floor. There is nothing good about it. And I think, I mean, he did well to get them up through the divisions. But this guy is well out of his depth. Um, when they should have forced forward because they were trying to get Emery. I think if they'd have signed someone like Unai Emery, who I think is a very underrated coach in the game. That, 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 that name rings a bell. Yeah, I like <clears throat> I think he gets a good game going, and I think he would have been better at yep. Arsenal had they gave him Zaha instead of Pepe. Um, as, long, as, long, as, long as, as long as they teach him how to say good evening, <laughs> I, think they, I think they might they might be fine with him. He's not a bad manager, yeah. Yeah, I like him. I think he's very good for cups, and I think he would have been good enough to get Newcastle out of the problem they were in. But they were replaced an experienced manager in Bruce with somebody with... One relegation in one relegation battle. I think it was is, a very weird decision. The question is, though, is Emery a fight firefighting manager? You know, firefighter. 
uh, you know uh, who a fight fi firefighter is it's it's a fireman someone who is trying to put out a fire but also we use it i believe uh, correct me if i'm wrong but i believe we use use the uh, this expression a firefighter manager to describe a manager that sort of that sort of uh, joins a club in order to avoid being relegated <clears throat> Is, it, is, this, is this correct, Marvin? Just correct me if I'm wrong, please. I've not I've heard this, but you might be right. I, I've not I've heard, heard this. Oh, wow. Okay. I've heard it before. Fight, Maybe fight, fight, fight. Let me, let me check it quickly. Mm -hmm. so I, what about you, Nrup? Um, what do you think, think is going to happen tonight in the, Man in the Manchester-Newcastle game? I think it's going to be a close win. I mean, Manchester United... Uh, yeah, they're still recovering from the Ole time and they haven't had much changes in their squad. And I believe Ralf Ragnick needs some changes, lots of changes. And uh, yeah, I think it's difficult for, for the squad to change from Ole's uh, style of football to Ralf's style of football. It's way too intense considering the size and uh, the style what Manchester United plays. It's going to take some time. I think it's going to be a close win. But I would love uh, United to drop more points. So do I. Yeah. Okay. That's all. We are we are su we are supporting the richest club in the world tonight. I think, starting soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just just quickly check the firefighter manager. It's correct. So, yeah. for example, Sam Allardyce was labeled as a fire fire he had a firefighter reputation. Yeah, Sam Allardyce. So, just to give an example, yes. Okay, fantastic. I managed to keep it relatively short, you know, 40. I want 45 minutes, 50 minutes. I'm almost getting there. It's still not New Year. So, you know, give me some time. This is a tr transition period, you know, trust the trust the project, trust the process, guys. Trust the process. Yeah. Like we say at Arsenal. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, please, please give us a like, share and subscribe if you enjoy this show. It's going to help the channel out a lot. And well, we... Hope to see you next time, next week, same time. If you want to watch this live, 9, no, sorry, 8 p.m. Central European time, which is 7 p.m. UK time every Monday. All right. Great. So see you next year, 2022, I guess. Right. And wishing all the fans and everyone yeah. a happy new year. Happy new year, everyone. Happy new year. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.